if we do some checking of literature on combustion and oxidizers, we may find the statement that acids are oxidizing agents. That is, acids are materials which should be available and ready to cause materials to burn or oxidize. Well, suppose we check some of our more common acids and see what their ability is to do this job of oxidizing various materials. We'll check acetic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. And to give them their most efficient chance, uh, we'll use them in their concentrated forms, as concentrated as it is possible for us to have them right here. Now, first of all, we have to mix up a combustible material, which we have right here. And then to this, we are going to add an oxidizer so that all that the acids will have to do is to give the initial oxidation. In other words, they will be our starting materials. So that we now have a mixture here of a combustible material along with an oxidizer. Now, in this case, we see that uh, the combustible material and the oxidizer do a little more than simply mix. Now, we'll take a small amount of this test it with our first acid. Our first acid will be concentrated acetic acid, which is called glacial acetic acid. Now this is about 99%, 99% in its concentration. And I think it's quite obvious to see here that uh, we do not get any combustion or any oxidation taking place. So our statement about acids being oxidizing agents uh, might not be as true as uh, it might sound. Well, let's uh, take a little bit more of our material. to try with our concentrated acetic acid, or excuse me, our concentrated hydrochloric acid in this case. Now the highest concentration we can get on hydrochloric acid is uh, only about 36%. This is still fairly strong in the sense of concentration. And we do see that we get some kind of action going on here, but uh, it is not a true combustion. We're getting some oxidizing, but not enough to produce a combustion or a burning of our combustible materials. So the oxidizing ability of our second acid is a little stronger than our first one. Well, let's move along here now to our third one, concentrated sulfuric acid. Maybe you've seen or heard of concentrated sulfuric acid and have some idea of some of its abilities. And you might be second guessing to just what will take place when we add this concentrated sulfuric acid. Let's compare it to the other two.
we did not get the results that I had hoped to get, so suppose we try adding a little more acid. We did get uh, some combustion there or oxidation because we do see the black results, but I think we can get a little better results than that. And there, of course, we do with the addition of a little more acid get the kind of combustion and of course we got a little piece over here in our other pile with the uh, where the acetic acid was and what the acetic acid failed to do our sulfuric acid is going to uh, do for it so we'll wait until our uh, side reaction we might say ceases and we'll try the situation then with our concentrated nitric acid. Our side reaction has ceased and obviously we can see that our sulfuric acid thus far has been our strongest of our oxidizing acids. Now let's try a little more here with the concentrated nitric acid. And again, let's keep in mind the speed of our reactions on each one of our cases. Here again, our reaction at first is not what we hope to get. Can we really see what's going on? Well, let's try an addition here of uh, another material so that we do give the nitric acid its full chance to behave the way I think it should behave. And now, finally, a rather furious reaction, and we get the results that we should. We see then that we can have some rather furious oxidation taking place by using some very strong concentrated oxidizing acids. And our sulfuric acid and nitric acid did the best job for us.